Good morning and welcome to day two at the uh, NEC Classic Motor Show. We're back in Hall 5 again today because I completely overlooked the Volkswagen Scirocco's ranging from fairly early ones to um, later ones. Uh, I'm very sorry for not coming to the Scirocco register stand yesterday. Uh, I've also got some Corrado's over here. Uh, lots of cars I just didn't see because I was just overexcited. Uh, the most notable omission was the Lancia Motor Club stand. Really good, we've got a lovely Fulvia HF. Get loads of these Fulvia Coupes turned up at my meetings, I'm not sure why. Gorgeous Lancia Aurelia, which has a narrow angle V6 engine. Uh, a, a, an astonishing technical tour de force. Look at the detail on the lights. Beautiful. And uh, I think this is a Lambda, it's pre-war, so um, I'm not the best person to ask, but one of the earliest uses of monocoque construction in a car. That's lovely, I wonder what that drives like. Uh, over here we've got a Delta Integrale, uh, an interesting uh, Lancia model, and uh, the, uh, oh, I don't even know what this is, is this a Chrysler Delta that someone's rebadged? I think it is. Uh, they're actually sold in the UK as Chrysler's because Lancia's weren't sold in the UK anymore. Uh, so uh, an intriguing sight to see. Also need to check out the Beaters over here, the Lancia Beta Forum. And a couple of lovely, well, a few lovely examples, including the Targa, the uh, Notchback, if you like, and the HPE. Uh, I always admired the way the uh, mirrors go through the windows of those. Uh, very interesting cars to drive as well. Uh, I think that's it for this haul. Now, um, I'm, I'm sure there's probably something I've missed. It's not intentional. It's just that there's so much ground to cover. So now we're going to go back to Hall 4 and look at the cars we didn't see yesterday. So Morris Miners is a good display of cars. Uh, all sorts, a little trailer there, which matches the tow car. And uh, they're also doing the anniversary of the Minor Millions. So they've recreated the scene when the Minor Million first went on sale. I think it was one for every dealership. Um, ended up with one of those back in the day. Could be wrong. Memory gets a bit foggy as I get older. But we're making our way through the show. Seems to have a Ferrari F1 car there. And some beautiful big American car. Buick Invicta. Is it a Buick Invicta? It is a Buick. That's quite fine. Love this. That's great. Proper sort of barn find vibes. Uh, there's a live stage here. Uh, Practical Classics have got various stuff going on today. Uh, so many tools uh, you can buy. But uh, we need to go over here. This is the Modern Executive Cars Group. Modern Classic Executive Cars Group. Mr. Pollitt, not too grand. And I drive, so not I drive a classic, car and classic. .co.uk, that's his Rover, uh, I think this is Alex's Jag, one of the alley bodied ones, uh, a Honda Legend, I think that belongs to Chris James, uh, that's quite a rare car, and an absolutely minty Nissan Bluebird, which uh, takes me back to my childhood when my dad had a 1.6 LS, um, quite like that, that's a premium which actually sat slightly lower down. Uh, they also like their old school technology on this stand. We've got the Rover P6 Club, uh, still with cars covered up. Uh, the Rover BRMs with their pimping interiors. Exquisite. Uh, the Rover Sports Register over here. Nice mix of cars, including a, what looks like a fairly early Rover R8, a 216 GTI. Uh, it only got on the early ones this little boot spoiler. Uh, standard you got a bigger one on the uh, uh, on the options list uh, Rover ZTs and uh, MG sorry MG ZTs Rover 75s uh, Rover SD ones whoa 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 we're just going to take a quick break from that report it's now just after the show is closed but did you know the Rover SD one could be had with headlamp wipers look at that I didn't even know this was a thing. It only fitted, I think, on the V8S. But, uh, yeah, extraordinary. So my friend Tim is not going to have any issues going home tonight. So that's... Uh, I did not know... How did I not know for the Rover SD1 
had headlamp wire. Oh, your, your wife is a erect, sir. Uh, that won't do. There we go. All good. There we go. But uh, I, I love this one as well. This is also a VAS and it's Triton Green. I think Triton Green is just one of my favourite colours. So absolutely splendid. Lovely selection of cars here on the Rover SD1 Club stand. Right, let's jump back on the report. Uh, heading down here, we've got the Gay Classic Car Group. And uh, I always love to come and look at their stand because they always have such a mix of cars. Uh, it's a BMW um, E9 CSL. Absolutely beautiful little Morris 8. The, the bug eyes who were known, these headlamps used to sit back on the wing, but they were so ineffective for people fitted these modified pods. And I haven't seen this car for a very long time. Uh, I think this still belongs to someone I know called Jonathan, who's owned it from new. I've known him pretty much from my very earliest days in 2CV GB. We're talking mid 1990s when he owned this car and it was beautiful then. And what are you doing here? It's that blooming Honda S660 again, it's following me around. So it was at Johnny's Late Break Show, it was at a Hubnut Social down in Devon. Uh, the cutest little car keeps coming back. Uh, racing pride apparently. Go racing in your BMW, Alfa Romeo 166, deliciously vulgar. Peugeot 106 Rally. And a lovely little MG of the um, ADO 16 type, the BMC 1100, 1300. Another Renault Fuego, which I forgot, gives us both a headlamp wiper moment and a pantograph wiper moment. A very interesting wiper linkage. Do check out my test on them. Uh, I, I noticed the, um, the gayers aren't here yet. I'm guessing they probably had a heavy night. I saw some tweets from Jim suggesting so. Uh, Opel GT. Now, these are fascinating cars. Absolutely beautiful. Definitely a hint of baby Corvette about them. Came with the um, 1.9 cam in head engine, I think or a 1.1 overhead valve in some markets. Absolutely beautiful cars, sort of rotating headlamps. And this is a, an early Volkswagen Type 3. It's a variant, it's the uh, estate car. And finally, we've got a Humber. It's pre-war, so I had to come in and actually have a look. But yeah, very, very nice. Now I'm gonna come over to this stand. I'm going to say that this is the Vanden Pla. Uh, uh, owners club stand that's a princess four liter r with the four liter rolls royce engine that that engine was a development of a military engine and was meant to be used in a cheaper bentley and rolls royce but would share structure with um, bmc it didn't come to anything in the end so bmc just stuck the engine in what they already had it's basically an austin westminster body shell uh, we've got a maestro with a talking dashboard hiding under that cover and uh, uh, another ADO 16, BMC 1100, 1300, but this is the poshest, the Vanden Pla version. And they are super plush. Look, we've got the picnic tables displayed to good effect. Proper walnut, very good leather. They are lovely, lovely cars. Uh, unfortunately, the only chance um, us YouTubers get to film is uh, this time before the show opens. It's the only opportunity we get. Oh, wow, look at this. It looks like an ex, yeah, ex um, Royal Mail Morris Minor van. Uh, they refused to fit heaters and demisters, so they had opening windscreens and uh, rubber wings quite often as well. Very um, bizarre. But yeah, this is the only chance we get. Uh, the show opens in less than an hour. Oh, Ferrari 328 there, that's quite nice. Uh, this is West Berkshire Classic Vehicle Club. Nice mix of vehicles, including a uh, Austin J4 van. Uh, that's quite funky. Wipers at the top. Uh, so yeah, so this is our only chance to get around the show and uh, unfortunately a lot of um, car clubs cover their cars up and they aren't in yet so their cars are still covered up. It's a bit of a shame but uh, there we are. When, once the show opens we're on the stand. Um, yesterday was so very very busy. Um, we didn't really get a chance to um, do any exploring during the day. Barely got off the stand at all. Uh, but we're going to go and see if we can get around Hall 3 today. Because um, otherwise I'm just going around the same old halls. Lovely Morris J van. Austin badge there. But it is a Morris. And I saw the Bedford lorry that um, brought these in. They were transported in in a beautiful 1980s Bedford recovery truck and trailer. And I saw that on the M6. It's just as beautifully done uh, as that truck. So, uh, yeah, fair play to them. 
or toys. Try not to spend money. Hold on, I've just noticed this. This will appear to appeal to the Australians. It's a Bentley Ute. Look at that. Uh, that's quite an extraordinary creation. I'm not sure why you would do that. But uh, yeah, definitely evokes memories of Australia right there. I'm loving the Vauxhall Nova SR on the Poor Boys World detailing stand. That's really funky. And uh, Midlands Mini Club, got some nice cars. And then we've got more minis. The Italian job, raising money for children in a fun way. That sounds admirable. I'm just gonna have to um, push on through the um, announcements, I'm afraid. Uh, try and shield you from it as best I can. But the Imp Club have only gone for modified imps this time, it seems. Oh, look, little mini Marcus there. That's quite funky. We've got more um, Talbot Sunbeams, but it, it's like, you know, where, where are the standard ones? That They all seem to be rally cars these days. And uh, I don't fully understand that. Uh, I, I want to see a non-Lotus. Uh, do any still exist? But look at this Avenger, Avenger Estate. That's absolutely delicious. Plenty of vinyl to rip your legs to pieces on hot days. Very, very nice indeed. Uh, nice Cortina Mark II there on the Burton Power stand. And we'll go over here for the mini kit stand. Uh, I've been looking forward to this one. This will be uh, really good. We've got uh, a William Towns Hustler. So William Towns did the design for that. They didn't necessarily look that colourful when William Towns designed them, but uh, you could make them out of wood. And this is a Titchy, which is a, a shortened Mini. That's quite funky. And a Stimson Scorcher, which again, Mini Power Plant, and it's a trike. And because it's a trike, you don't have to wear a helmet when you go on it, which is a bit weird. Uh, it is for sale, apparently. And I don't even know what this is. Mini Bug. That is a, a very weird looking little thing. And a Trek. It looks more like Shrek. Uh, but yeah, very, very funky. Oh, more Herit and Sons vehicles. They've obviously got quite the fleet. So that's good to see. Um, interesting mini trailer. What's, what's the nose weight on that? Blimey. Uh, so that's quite um, interesting. Um, we've got uh, Sunbeam Tiger Club, but all their cars are covered up pretty much. We've got some Alpines, older memories. And there is the James Bond link. Do like an Alpine. We've got some historic rally cars, rally land crab. Now, some of these had a handle in the back so you could pump up the suspension as you went along. Uh, maybe this, maybe that's something relating to that. I don't know, but uh, fascinating cars. And uh, Capri, but I better look at or I'll get shouted out by Ford people. Uh, moving over here, we've got DeLoreans because obviously DeLoreans, many DeLoreans at the show. Even more Herit and Sons vehicles. They're spread out all over the place. Uh, and over here, we've got some Metros. I seem to recall this is a development car. I might be wrong. For the, for the bodywork on it. No, no, that's in the British Motor Heritage Collection, isn't it? Maybe this is actually a development running car. It does indeed appear to be rear engine. Always been fascinated by the Metro 6R4. Just incredible cars. Would love to do a video on one one day. Uh, MG Car Club, very impressive stand. They've got all of the lights. Du, 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 du. And uh, Panthers, always magnificent. This is a Panther de Ville. Cruella de Ville drove one of these in 101 Dalmatians. And uh, it uses the doors from an Austin Maxi quality. And they've also got Callistas and Lemurs, which were actual production cars in the 1980s, and I think quite stylish. Uh, more rally cars over here, yet another Talbot Sunbeam Lotus thing. So many of them, modified Chevette. And we've got a racing 2CV here. So that's good to see. Uh, 2CV Racing Club very much alive, ha held their 24 hour race this year. Beautiful Bristols, I do like them, lovely cars. This later one would have a thumping great V8 in it from Chrysler. Sprites and Midgets, that's an early one, because you've got no external door handles. And the hood is one you kind of have to assemble yourself if it starts raining. So that's really nice to see. And, oh, we've got another Lancia. Is it coming out? It must have been sold. It must have been on a trade stand and been sold. Uh, Gordon Keebles, absolutely beautiful cars. That's um, very, very nice. Alfa Romeo 75 race car there. 
and then we're into the um, delightful luxury cars. There's Lancia Flavia, very, very nice. Uh, Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. Uh, we are officially leaving my comfort zone. So if you like fancy cars, you'll have to come and have a look yourself because I'm just going to walk straight past them and go and find some more terrible cars to look at instead. Do like a Pagoda SL though. Beautiful cars. And a Fiat 124 Spider there. Very, very nice. I don't even know what that is. Some sort of kit car recreation thing. Um, kit cars all over the place, really. Um, doing this Jaguar XKSS, which I'm uh, guessing is a replica because you wouldn't just park a real one right there. Yeah, it's a uh, 4.2 six cylinder engine. I mean, it'd be fun, don't get me wrong. Oh my gosh, it's Max Power Days are back again. I don't know what stand that is, but that's an interesting looking car. And uh, Jaguar X type for 10 grand. Blimey. Um, yeah, nice backbone chassis on display there. And uh, here we go, we're back into Range Rover. So P38 on the Range Rover register here. Um, CVC, so that's probably a factory car. Uh, but that's got some stories to tell. Oh, was it a police car demo? Yeah, it's a police car demonstrator by the look of it. So yeah, very interesting historic cars. YVB H Range Rovers, they're pre-production cars. They were used for the press launch and uh, sometimes Velar badged, which is why you've got that new Range Rover Velar thing. Uh, got some new Range Rovers as well, or newer. They've just facelifted it again. Lotus Esprit, very much in the James Bond spec there. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is deliciously shabby. I think I spoke to the owner who spent the art out a few years ago. It's uh, far from perfect, but lovely. We have just found Mr. Pop Bang Color again, who is um, busy doing remarkable things with a Chevrolet Spark, is it? It is one of the original press cars from 2010. Wow. So there's only, I think there's 12 cars that are on a 2009 plate, and this is one of them. Blimey. This is the, the premium Chevrolet Spark LT, so it's mm. got the roof. Roof rails, very important. Because oh, yeah. We've got the roof rack on it now. Um, and then, yeah, so uh, lockdown project. So rather than painting that like I normally do at shows with the radio control cars, I'm doing something called continuous car drawing. So the entire outline of the car is done without taking the pen off the paper. Uh, Blimey. It's done in here, so I, I, there's no passenger seat. So I, I've got a stool in there instead. I sit backwards and... Uh, create drawings in there. And this is what I've been doing at all the events this year. Blimey. And then once you've got the image, it can then be turned into die bonds, into stickers, pin badges. Um, so yes, yeah, so all the stuff you see has been done. Wow. That way. Yeah, because you, you, you're more normally, you, you're sort of famous for painting with model cars and radio yeah, control those, cars. Those are just around here. So okay. Here, so the, um, this is Paddock Life and uh, Paddock Life magazine. Wow. And uh, so these are- Thank you very much. The, paintings and uh, I'm working with with, uh, with the Paddle Life Paddle Speed Shop they're producing a series of books mm -hmm. so these are the you know, these are the originals that are normally done with RC cars you can see the tracks yeah you can see the depth in the paint yeah so this is what I've been doing uh, yeah, wow. for 15 years from 2008 until, yeah. until uh, 2020 Gosh. Um, so that was Land Rover you got Fra uh, Ferrari F40 Blue mm -hmm. the car the, that car actually sold uh, very very recently for over a million pounds Oh, ah, does that mean your artwork is worth a million pounds? Some bloke called Paul Cowland, you might know him. I, th I, think, I think we've heard of no, Paul Cowland, haven't we? Yeah, yeah he came to say hello yesterday. Yeah, so uh, that's his Corvette. That's his, that was that One of done. his many, many cars. Many, many cars. So these are all 2019 artworks that were done. Mm. This was done at the Restoration Show, actually, here at NEC. Excellent. Um, but you can't see this, you can't get all the silvers and all the prettiness. Yeah, I can see the gold there the gold. as well. Yeah, amazing. So, um, so yeah, so that's that's my other stuff. Yeah, I beautiful. Made, just not as much. Yeah, well, thank you for letting us have a look. That's all right, pleasure. Well, that was a very pleasant uh, distraction. We've got the uh, Land Rover Series 1 Club here, the Heinkel Trojan Club. In fact, I think that is the Heinkel I drove at the National Microcar Rally a couple of years ago. So do go and check that video out. Awesome, awesome little things. And then we've got BMW Setters, another 600. So another BMW 600. That's... Um, lovely to see so this is the Isetta owners of great britain and as the 600 is kind of a bigger Isetta, you can now see the family relationship can you not uh yeah just 
wonderful. Uh, I always have a look at the Friskies, so we're gonna have a look at those. This is the Monte Carlo one. It's got twin rear wheels each side. So that actually took part in the Monte Carlo Rally. That is the chassis of a Frisky. Uh, in this case, with a three cylinder engine, yikes. I wonder if that's the body for it. Sporty Frisky. And uh, yeah, another one in just stock condition. Beautiful little cars. I think they were Michelotti again uh, on those, on the design work. So quite extraordinary gentleman. Uh, let's carry on down here. Uh, we've got more um, Trojans over there. Uh, this Porsche 911 Turbo gives us our important pantograph wiper, rear wiper moment. Uh, There's the Silverstone Auctions, lots of expensive cars selling here. I've uh, got some Jaguars. Uh, this is the Jaguar Drivers Club. There's also the Enthusiast Club. And uh, I'm not sure how friendly they are. Middlebridge Scimitars. So an interesting fact, if you own a Reliance Scimitar, people will mention Princess Anne about once every 20 minutes, but she still owns the Middlebridge Scimitar. And uh, more E-types on display here. Here is the Jaguar Enthusiast Club. Wow, look at that. That's a Mark 10 convertible. Wow. I mean, that is a big old lump of car and not a natural contender for um, conversion into a convertible, but that looks very nicely done. Lengthened doors and everything. Very interesting. Uh, a mean and moody X-Type. I think it's a supercharged one that didn't actually make production. I think that is from Jaguar's own heritage collection. And we've got the Reliant Owners Club over here. Um, I came over for a chat yesterday. This is a kitten chassis, apparently. So uh, a chance for me to explore all this, because this is all very similar to Fox Anne and try and work out how it all works. Uh, Fox Anne needs a front suspension overhaul, but look, double wishbone front suspension, coil springs, quite advanced at the front, just not quite so advanced at the back where you got simple leaf springs. And uh, there's a Rialto, which was like a facelifted Robin, and then it was facelifted again to become a Robin again. And with Vauxhall Corsa front lights, but fundamentally that's still the same body as the original 70s uh, Reliance. Uh, they've got a common myths over here. Uh, so uh, that is um, very, very um, recent. Reliant and DeLorean worked together to build a three-wheeler gullwing doors. It's a completely full story, but it does seem to be in the press at the moment for reasons I don't fully understand. And that's a Rebel. This was Reliant's first small um, four-wheeler. So they'd already built the Scimitar and Sabre sports cars, and then they decided to build the Rebel based on the Regal three-wheeler and uh, quite a funky little thing as well. Just struggled to get competition like the Mini. Bond bugs, oh, I still haven't done a Bond bug video, so you'll have to tell me off about that. Uh, one day it will happen. Oh, Fuzz Townsend there. It's the first time I've seen him this weekend. And uh, ooh, this scimitar has VTEC EO. Exciting. And uh, yeah, that's an SE5 scimitar and that's an SE6, which is just a bit wider. And then we've got a convertible, like the one we saw at, uh, well, you will be seeing, I haven't actually published it yet, Great British Car Journey. And there's a middle bridge here as well. So I have a feeling they only built 77 uh, scimitars. 79, I was close, look at that. And uh, we've got three of them here, so that's a pretty good rate. Uh, I think that's us done with haul three as well. So we're doing fairly well here. I may have missed a few stands, but it's so difficult to get around all of them. I, I kind of want to give you a flavor of the show, um, but it's very hard to do it in the tiny little window we have. I've got another fun project video I want to work on this weekend. We will just go to the S&G Barrett stand uh, because um, they're lovely people. This is 50 EE. I once drove this E-Type up Shelsley Walsh. I managed to get up to 70 miles an hour by the finish line. I was um, very, very pleased. And they've stripped it down so they can show you all the bits that are available from S&G Barrett. So uh, it's a bit weird seeing a car I've driven without its face. I also drove that car, it was my 300th video, was driving um, around Shropshire in that very lovely E-Type. It was, you know, not the usual hubnut fare, but I'm, I love E-Types. I can't really help myself, I just love E-Types. Uh, I've also got some very nice jackets here. Oh yes, because Holden Vintage and Classic has been bought by S&G Barrett, that's what that's about. It's a naked Range Rover. So if you ever wanted to see under the skin of a Range Rover, there you go. 
and uh, you'll find a very similar structure underneath a Land Rover Discovery as well. All right, uh, now we're into Hall 1, I think. Or is this Hall 2? I'm, I'm slightly confused. Maybe this is Hall 2. Anyone need any lights? They've got all of the lights. Du, 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 du. Uh, MGC, uh, no copyright intended. Uh, Peugeot 504 Coupe by Pininfarina. We saw the convertible on day one. And here is hole one. We are nearing the end. So let's go, people. Let's go. That's a very early um, Range Rover again on the um, Rimmer Brothers stand. Uh, built May 1970. So I think this was this, the first production batch off the production line at the um, NXC plates. So uh, good seat. Look at this lovely MGB. That looks absolutely delightful. Oh, this fills me with sadness. Uh, this is Puff the Magic Wagon. It's a maxi that competed um, on, was it the London Mexico? Yeah, London Mexico Rally, um, Daily Mirror. And uh, it was crewed by Tisha Zan, Tina Kerridge Reynolds, and Bronwyn Bron Burrell. And I think Bronwyn, or Bron rather, I think she still owns it and uh, even competes in, on rallies in it. And unfortunately, she got a COVID ping. Uh, when she was on her way to the show. So her car has come to the show, but she has not. You'll note it's been modified to um, have a, a fixed boot lid for a bit more structural strength, even though it's still got the hinges on top. And uh, yeah, the adventures this car has had and continues to have, brilliant. But this is the Lancaster Pride of Ownership uh, stand. We've got a lovely Humber Scepter here. So the Humber Scepter is effectively the sporty uh, version of the Singer Vogue I drove recently. You'll notice it's got a lower roof line, a bit more sleek and dynamic. So uh, that's great to see. We've got a Morris Ital over there. We've got um, Annie Lloyd's Bond Bug as well. Uh, Annie bought me some cake earlier in the show, so that was very kind of her. And uh, she loves her little Bond. Uh, and uh, yeah, the Morris Ital. And next to it, we've got a Rover P6 in avocado. One of the best colors that has frankly ever existed. Wasted on bathroom suites, I'll tell you. Uh, Dame Le Dart here. This is the classic trader uh, stand, apparently. And uh, let's continue having a look around, see what we can find. Shut up, lady, we're not interested anymore. Oh, hello. Eco classics, more electric classic cars. Is an E-Type with an electric motor sacrilege, or is it exciting? Uh, I bet this Mini's quite exciting, judging by the state of those front tyres. Uh, lovely Porsche 914 there. Uh, thanks, to you who of the, uh, thanks to those of you who reminded me last weekend, there is a Porsche 9146, which had the six-cylinder engine, as well as the 916, just to be confusing. Uh, Dodge Challenger RT. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And uh, again, we should continue our way around and see if there's any other interesting cars. This tends to be the more interesting, sorry, the, the higher end um, haul at the show. Uh, look at this Berlier. What, when does this date from? 1907 and 1916. Because uh, I think the Curtis engine might be a bit later. But uh, look at that exposed valve gear. So this is on the Vintage Sports Clubs, uh, Vintage Sports Car Club stand. And they're great because they, they don't mollycoddle these cars, they thrash them all over the place and do so much with them. Uh, moving over here, Rolls-Royce and Bentley Enthusiasts. And uh, this is, uh, oh no, this is Rolls-Royce Enthusiast Club, but they are for Rolls-Royce and Bentleys. And look, they own this beautiful cut down shadow. It was obviously prepared um, for a show at some point and they keep this. I saw this drive into the show. So it's a full up and running cut down skeleton of a silver shadow. And it's great to see. Lovely club, actually. I remember when I um, edited that one issue of Rolls-Royce and Bentley Driver, um, I found both clubs, the Rolls-Royce Enthusiast and the Bentley Drivers Club, an absolute joy to uh, deal with. Uh, De Tomasos, uh, is that a long champ in the middle there? I'm not very good on these. Really weird looking thing. And it's got a pantograph wiper. We've got a pantograph wiper moment there. Nice. And uh, Pantera. And uh, this is the, the um, uh, yeah, they call these a Deauville as well. And uh, more doors and um, must have upset Jaguar a bit. Uh, quite an early Pantera there. TVR Car Club, we've got a nice mix of cars. 
and uh, that's interesting that's like a chimera with a hard top uh, the tamora is probably the last tvr introduced that i actually like very colorful stand right let's uh continue our walkings ac owners club have got two cars here they're greyhounds so a development of the ac ace but two plus two so it's got a rear seat uh, i really like this one over here uh, it's got a beautiful patination to it. It looks like it works fairly hard for its living. It's got recent hill climb um, stickers on it. Look, we can see no triangle of doom, but quite a large area of disappointment when it comes to the windscreen wipers. Good to see. There are not enough cars here with windscreen wiper patterns. And uh, lovely uh, old early AC here, the Royal Roadster. A reminder that AC developed my Invercar. So my Invercar was actually designed and developed by AC. Alfa Romeo Owners Club, lovely mix of cars, some looking more leery even others. Just past the MG Owners Club stand, I, I've just noticed more root stuff along here that we better take a look at. In this stunning Humber Super Sniper State. Uh, trying to remember, is it Series 4 or 5 that introduced the quad headlamps? But it was one of the first UK cars to have quad headlamps. Another Humber Scepter. Uh, again, another one of those sleek versions of the uh, Singer Vogue and the Hillman Superminx, which conveniently there is one of here. So this is a Hillman Superminx estate. Uh, it's got the 1725cc engine. I like that. I'm not usually a fan of mini lights. It works. And Arrows Hunters and Minxes. This is a Minx. Lower specs. So you've got circular headlamps on your Minx. But look at that. Jazzy two-tone vinyl. That is um, rather delightful. And we've got more Sunbeam Alpines and Tigers over here. So Tiger is the one with the V8 engine. A Ford V8 engine, which became a problem when Chrysler bought the European Roots uh, department. And then they couldn't actually fit a Chrysler V8 in one. This looks like a Ford Mondeo uh, BTCC car. Very, very low. It exaggerates the low um, wing line rather. I mean, it's below my hip level. And to conclude my report, uh, last and certainly by no means least, this is the vampire jet car that almost killed Richard Hammond. Uh, it has been restored. Apparently it's the same engine, uh, pretty much the same chassis. Uh, the roll bar had all been cut off to rescue a, a certain hamster. But yeah, this is the car he was driving when um, it all went so very, very wrong. Rather him than me, I have to say and uh, that was back in 2006 it does 0 to 60 in one second and 0 to 270 in 6.7 uh, there was a sister car built which uh, apparently um, killed someone at santa pod so that they are dangerous dangerous vehicles but it's now um, owned by a group of chaps who occasionally run it i don't think they drive it because they're not insane but uh yeah, it, it's great that it still exists. It's great that it didn't actually kill him. It just came very, very close. Well, this is some rare bit of filming during the day. This actually isn't as busy as it has been, but this is what the show looks like when everyone's in it. It's like crazy. But uh, this is a bit of bonus footage. I'm sneaking into my second video because someone has just asked a comment. What about the uh, Ginettas? And I missed the Ginettas. It's just been a crazy busy day trying to walk around um, well, you, you're just speaking to people all day and getting slightly overwhelmed. So please don't take it personally, Janetta folk. Uh, I just missed your stamp, but I'm here to make up for it. Here is the Janetta Owners Club. Uh, now, I don't know a lot about Janettas, but I do know this is a G15, which is based on Hillman Imp running gear. I do know it's absolutely cute. And this one is absolutely beautiful. Uh, I think this was a G33. Am I right? Ah, oh, yes. Uh, now these generally, I think, had V8 engines, uh, usually the Rover V8s. Let's see what this one's got. Uh, yes, got a 3.9 litre TVR tuned V8. So yeah, great cars. I don't know what this one is. I don't think I've seen one of these ever. I can see the same styling cues as the, uh, uh, the G15 over there, but yeah, G10. 4.7 litre Ford V8. Wow. So, yeah, original production 
Ah, oh, some 11s have been converted to 10s, but very, very rare. Yeah, I don't remember ever seeing one. And uh, Ginetta, I think, are still going. I think there are still Ginetta race series. There's a Ginetta Juniors and then a Seniors race class. So, uh, yeah, very impressive. But, yeah, as you can see, this is what it's like in the middle of the day. This is why I don't film in the middle of the day. It's um, absolute crazy, crazy bedlam. Um, but, yeah, here's those uni powers again. And uh, I'm going to go back to the stand because otherwise um, people will be wondering where I am. Constant problem. But yeah, what a show. Hiding in this section of uh, Hall 1 is Kelsey Media, uh, who I used to work for with various titles, Rolls Royce and Bentley Driver, Classic Jaguar being two of them. Uh, they've got this lovely Bentley, uh, which I really do like. It's been featured quite extensively. It's even for sale. Uh, thankfully at a price I can't afford, so that's alright, that's all good. Uh, carry on around here. Oh, they've got uh, Ferrari 348s and the like around here. And Lamborghinis and stuff is already getting covered up. This is the problem, it's late in the day and uh, already cars have been um, covered up, which makes it a bit of a mockery when you're trying to do your show report. So I'll have a quick buzz around the Maguire's uh, concourse. Uh, so yeah, just had a quick chat there. There's uh, a 1978 Marina. That's looking absolutely splendid. We've got a Nova GSI. The GSI replaced the earlier GTE as the top performance model. Quite nice. Uh, the purple BMW M3, I know, has been tempting quite a lot of people I know. Uh, yeah. But I think one of the most surprising things for me, oh, it's very early Mercedes, we're going to have a nose at that in a minute, uh, is this Corsa. There is a Vauxhall Corsa C here. My sister had one of these as her first car. And yet here it is in a concourse. Uh, a reminder, this car is 20 years old. Yeah, here is a most intriguing car. I see it's won Classic and Sports Cars Club Awards for car of the show. I'm not surprised. It's 1934 Mercedes-Benz W23 130. It's rear-engined. The engine is here at the back. Uh, Mercedes-Benz first rear-engine car, well, apart from the earlier dog carts, the very first production car was rear-engined, of course, and the first um, four-wheel drive. I've never seen one of those cars ever, so that's a, an absolute delight to see here on the uh, Mercedes-Benz Club stand. Uh, moving over here, we've got the BMW Z1 with the doors that drop down into the sill, and a uh, really nice um, that 1602, it is a 1602. That looks absolutely splendid. So there you go, you can find some um, hidden gems even in Hall 1 of the uh, NEC Classic Motor Show. I'll tell you what, having a classic car show and a Comic Con going on at the same time is a great idea. I think there should be more of it. I think the Comic Con folks should come into the classic car event. I think it would liven it up an absolute treat. Selfie mode engage. We are all rushing off, but I'm going to be first. Goodbye. I'm off. I'm off. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Into the halls we go. Look, look, there's a car. <laughs> yeah, we're actually jumping into corrections and extras this morning. So we've already seen the, the show. We've had a good walk around, but I need to come back because I made a huge error here. Uh, this is the uh, Fairfort Sports Car Club, and I was having a chat with a gentleman <laughs> yesterday. I completely misidentified this car. This is much rarer than I thought it was. It is not a peerless, it's a tornado. A tornado, and this is, the, I think, their final um, attempt at a road car, the Talisman. Very, very pretty car, actually. Tornado made a load of cars which I can best describe as lumpy, I think is a good way to sum up to tornado cars. And then they came up with this beautiful car, which I think matches um, anything else you'd see in Europe. It's, you know, batoni pleasantness to it. Uh, I think I got caught out. It's got the headlamps with the indicators beneath. That is quite a peerless um, thing, but yeah, great. And the Fairfoot Sports Car Club does cater for all the cars. So we've got a Turner here, uh, the Tornado here, and then we've got the Fairfoot Electron Miners at each end of their range. So I've just come back for that little um, correction. This one has a Ford 1600 Crossflow in um, not very much car. That must be entertaining. So this, this club has existed since the 1960s. So here is the Talisman in period art form. 
And here are the earlier cars. You can see why I described them as lumpy. Uh, they really are very odd looking things. Similar sort of vein to uh, Marcus, I think. Lots of fiberglass and using sort of Ford parts from the 1930s onwards. Ah, Stig just wandering around all casual like. I wonder where he's off to. Maybe I should try and get a photo of him sitting in Tuck. I'm not sure his massive helmet would fit in though, unfortunately. Uh, let's have some more additions. Pre-war Triumphs. This is the original Triumph Dolomite. Look at that beautiful flowing grill. These were, you know, quite advanced, luxurious cars before the Second World War. Um, but afterwards, Triumph found it a bit harder, tried finding um, favour with less luxurious cars. But look at this. Triumph Super 7. Not sure I've ever seen one. The famous Bergerac-esque Triumph Roadster, complete with dicky seat. And windscreen for your kiddies. They don't get a roof, but at least they don't get air blasting straight into their eyes. But uh, someone uh, requested extra footage of a car, so I'm going to go and have a look at it. Here's another correction. Um, Adrian Day, Elva was built in Bexhill, East Sussex. Well, I'm glad to correct that because here I am in front of the Elva, the Elva Courier that was in the first video. So yeah, not made in Yorkshire as I thought. I'm probably getting confused with Rochdale there, aren't I? The Rochdale Olympic. Um, so these were made in Bexhill in Surrey. Incidentally, here's a Lancia narrow angle V4 engine on display back on the Association of Historic Engineering. And uh, you can see just how narrow that angle is. Very slightly offset and a, a one piece cylinder head for all four cylinders, but it makes it very compact. And then you've got a couple of carburettors, hopefully Del Autos, indeed they are. And a uh, very interesting display. Yes, we're back in um, this corner of Hall 5 again. Uh, as someone correctly pointed out, this isn't a Manta turned into an estate. It's a, an Opel Ascona turned into a Manta because the front panels just bolt on. I think it makes for a really attractive vehicle. But um, Joe Freddy posted a comment saying, can we see more of the lovely green opal manta ray so here we are having a look at it it's a fabulous 1970s shade of metallic green uh it looks absolutely splendid turns out this car used to belong to the chairman of the club this is the opal manta owners club and uh has passed in 2016 to the current owner um who uh, the only modification he's made is to fit a weber carburetor and uh yeah beautiful looking car lovely shape somehow very very germanic but uh, you've got this sort of exotic ducktail spoiler rear end, really nice rear lights. But you'll see this one's an automatic. So it's got the 1.9 camming head engine allied to a three speed automatic gearbox. So just like the later Manta, we've got frameless doors. We've had permission to go aboard and have a bit more of a look. So there is the gear selector and uh, the uh, steering wheel. Really nice, clear dials, lovely black vinyl seats to match the black vinyl roof, another staple of the 1970s. So yeah, lovely to see. Oh, so solid, sounds so good. Actually, this is getting utterly ridiculous. I didn't look at the Autobahn Stormers stand either. We got more headlamp wiper moments, courtesy of this Opel Monza and uh, the Vauxhall Senator, which is the badge engineered version. So this is pure, pure um, badge engineering by this stage. And uh, it's Opel Commodore, I think, GSE, big old coupe. Based on the same structure, the record, uh, the Opel record, as the uh, uh, Vauxhall Victor FE, but the Victor FE had slightly different front suspension. I've just noticed we've got another headlamp wiper moment. I'll have a peek down there. Woo! It's been rightly pointed out that I didn't quite spend enough time with the um, Saab Owners Club stand. Uh, but we've got an interesting comparison here with this kind of the stubby fronted 900 and the later slightly sleeker version. Um, still headlamp wipers, in fact the headlamp wipers have changed very slightly in design. But we'll look at this one, I was just chatting to Yona, he was having a look at Tuck. And uh, very, very nice. That's the 900 turbo 16 valve. Looks like it might have a few tweaks um, beyond that as well. And then we've got a late 9000 facelift CSE 2.3 turbo. I did have an early slab front, one of these. There were two facelifts on these. 
It had a slab front and had a slightly less slabby front. And then this was the final facelift for them. But look at the seats. Aren't they inviting? Don't you just want to sit in there? So, uh, yeah, beautiful cars. So, um, and we've even got a bit of Saab automobile history here in Hall 5. Thank you so much to everyone who came. There were so many of you come to see myself, uh, Steph I Driver Classic and Matt Furious Driving. Uh, it, it's been overwhelming, to be honest. And uh, yeah, we're very grateful. So thank you to those who weren't able to come and who viewed, those who met us in person, and uh, those who even just waved in passing. It's been splendid. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in a future video. It has been a long, exhausting three days, but we are near the end. Uh, the merchandise chaos will upset Miss Hubnut no end. But uh, yeah, we are almost at the end of the show. We are um, just waiting for the countdown to announce that the show is closed. Uh, oh no, the horns, the early horns, they're a bit premature. So now we're just waiting for the magic moment. It's all going to get very, very loud. Everyone is waiting. Everyone's just waiting for the madness to this end. Matt's recording, Steph's hiding in her proton. Oh. I think that rather beats a Pichu, don't you?